Of course, I'm talking about the iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is the flagship among the flagships. It's the big 12 and 12 Pro coming first. That's the device that I've been using, that I've mentioned, that I've referenced, and made many videos on. So they came with that first and the regular iPhone 12. And then the Max and the Mini come at a later date. Uh, presumably something to do with volume. The other thing is this is just going to be pricey. That's the most expensive of all the iPhone 12. 1090. This is the gold model. That's correct. Uh, of course, it's carrying the exact same design as the regular Pro model. And I did an unboxing video of every single color of iPhone 12 and 12 Pro. So you should go check that out if you want to see color comparisons. But what you get with the Pro part of the lineup is this stainless steel frame around the outside. Obviously, it does covers most of where you grip, but keeps it super thin. And by the way, we do have the full coverage prototype here. That's the one I've been using. That's what you will have shipped to you if you pre-order a later case for either your iPhone 12 Pro or Pro Max. This has this subtle kind of champagne hue to it. Of course, we have our camera modules up top. And actually, I'm kind of curious if we're able to spot any difference in that region when compared to the standard iPhone 12, because they are not, oh yes, you can absolutely tell a difference. So there is your regular Pro, and look at the scale difference on the Pro Max. Each unit is substantially increased in scale. It's not just that the phone got bigger, but each camera module got bigger. All right, so also inside the package, we have our cable. We have to remember here, there's no power brick included. You will need to bring your own power brick to the party. I, of course, have the power brick that I've been recommending. Yeah, so this is the power brick I've been recommending for iPhone. This is the power brick I've been using with the 12 Pro. It's a tiny little 20 watt adapter from Anchor, the Anchor Nano. I'll link it in the description. I think there's even a discount beyond that because they've been, uh, because Anchor's been a sponsor of the channel. So you can check that out. But this kind of gives you the old iPhone power brick with the power of the new iPhone power brick, which you have to buy extra. And it does so for less money than Apple's power brick. So this is kind of a cool little addition. You gotta have a faster recharge than, than whatever old brick you have. You may have like a five watt sitting around. Don't use that with a phone like this. Get yourself a 20 watt in the exact same package. It's the Nano. You have your cable. This is a type C to lightning cable. Pretty self-explanatory. We of course did not get type C on both ends because the iPhone still maintains the lightning connector, but this is the same for all the models. And then it's a tiny bit of paperwork, SIM tool, and of course your Apple sticker is also inside the package. So I'm just gonna slide over the smaller model. This thing is quite a bit bigger. And it's not just that camera unit. I mean, it's in every direction. You know what? It's still manageable. It's definitely a big phone. I mean, you expected it to be a big phone. You know that it's a big phone. I don't know which one is gonna be my preference. I think the main incentive for me to upgrade would probably be the bigger battery. I mean, the battery difference is quite substantial. You've got just over 3,600 milliamp hours over here on the max model. And on the smaller unit, you're around 2,800 milliamp hours. Now, granted, You've obviously got a different screen size to power up, so it's not a one-to-one -one type of thing, but you could, I mean, it's fairly safe to say that the Max model is going to be the one you want for battery life, likely. All right, so the device is set up, and honestly, the biggest difference, well, it has differences. Uh, there's, there's some complicated camera stuff that's different on the Pro Max model compared to the Pro, but the scale of it is the, the main thing, I think that, well, I think it's a big reason people are gonna make a decision between these two. Uh, from, from my hand, which I, is probably an average hand size, the regular Pro model, I can reach pretty much every aspect of the display, even with a single handed grip. On the, on the Max model, that's a little more difficult to do. But you kind of know, you knew this going into it, obviously. And, and then on the flip side, if you want to boot, boot up a video or something, this is just more space. This is just going to be a little bit more immersive. And then that brings me to 
the camera because this is going to be I mean, this thing needs some degree of explanation because even during the keynote, I had so many people asking me questions after the keynote took place. Like, what is the difference between these cameras? I showed you here now in this video that they're physically different, but they're also, from a specification standpoint, different. Probably the biggest standout for me is that in the video mode on the Pro Max, you have sensor shift technology for image stabilization, which presumably is superior to the more typical optical stabilization that exists on the regular Pro model. But the lenses actually have different attributes as well. So I'm looking at the spec sheet here and zoom on the Max model compared to the Pro model. And you, they even give you more digital zoom. Why? I don't know. Is it a superior, do we have superior image here that allows them to give you more digital zoom? 12X over here, 10X on a regular Pro. But either way, those the, those specs are fairly close. So I think this uh, image stabilization thing, the camera app, and you see right away that your quick toggles for focal lengths, 0.51x and 2 on a regular Pro, 0.51x, 2.5 on a Pro Max. So a little bit more reach, but a slightly smaller aperture. And I mean really slightly. We're talking about 0.2. So I'll grab the trusty plant here. And we will snap at 0.5, which is your wide angle. One. And 2.5. Wow. All right. So that zoom lens, I mean, that is, that is some tremendous detail right there. Uh, I'm happy with that 2.5, and it's a little more reach. So probably because the optical brings you ever so slightly closer, they'll also let you keep zooming digitally a little bit further than you can on a regular Pro. The standard camera, probably the best performer of the bunch uh, for your standard focal range. One thing I'm noticing here, it's not uh, any kind of crazy saturation on the green color of the plant. Is that different from the non-max model? Hmm. That's the standard, uh, that's the main camera on both units. It's a different look. Now the displays are different as well, so we can open up these files and take a closer look at it, but they kind of have a, a slightly different performance here. I notice actually on the Max model, maybe better contrast. Interesting, but it could also, it could also be the display playing a role in this analysis. Oh my God, I mean, it's, for me, I don't know. This is the first time, I'm so curious because it's the first time that Apple has had a, a significant difference or any difference you could write on a spec sheet between the two pro models, between their high-end models. It was, it, used, it was scale for so long, so all we would have to say is, oh, yep, it's the bigger phone. Maybe you don't even want the bigger phone, but you're sitting there saying for a hundred extra bucks, I could have a better performing camera and you might take that deal. And therefore, and now if you're serious about photography or video on your iPhone, you kind of have to scale up weirdly. Now, granted, this thing takes absolutely great photos, but I think a lot of people are just gonna wanna, want the best. And to me, this one looks better. When you add into it the extra image stabilization, the sensor-based image stabilization, I think, I mean, a lot of people are gonna be uh, considering the big one because the price difference is actually not all that different if you're okay with scaling your device up to this size. That's another thing I'm curious about, the front-facing camera. I'd say those are essentially identical. Unlike the rear camera, these are doing pretty much the exact same thing with my face. No? Nice picture. Oh yeah, no, it looks good. Now the other thing is video because we have this uh, shifting sensor. We have this stabilization on this model that is not the same stabilization as on the other model. So, all right, I'm recording 4K 60 frames on both devices, the Pro and the Pro Max. And you're gonna see them both. 
and you're going to compare them both. I'm walking. Come here, Otis. Good job. Little bounce. Little bounce. Up the stairs. Yeah, I feel like I can see a subtle difference. I sort of, when I was shooting it, I felt a slight advantage on the Pro Max model. You know what? They both look good. I'll say that. Uh, they both do a fairly decent job of smoothing things out. So anyway, I mean, as far as the stabilization in video is concerned, it's fairly subtle. Maybe it'll be a little bit more significant. You get it blown up on the big display, but there's no doubt that if you can have a sensor shift adding to your image stabilization, it's gonna be a thing that you want. Okay, this is the regular Pro. Max out the volume. These, are, these phones have always sounded good. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it has more bass too. Look, they both sound good and it's close, but I'm gonna have to give the edge to the Max model. And to be honest, I'm not surprised. And there's no doubt that Apple would put its best technology in its Pro Max model. I just think this year it's a bit complicated figuring out which to buy because the Pro Max really is the actual Pro by the looks of it as it stands right now. And so people are gonna have to decide between the ultimate feature set, which comes in a larger, more expensive package, or a slightly toned down version of that feature set. Now it's not massive, but it's tough because once I'm thinking pro, I'm thinking I want all the features, I want the top end spec at all costs. And, uh, and that's essentially what this model ends up being, but it will still probably be too large for some people. Let's do a pocket test real quick. Why don't we? All right, here is regular pro. That's a, that's a portable, that's a portable phone. I can carry that, no problemo. 12 Pro, and then let's do Max. Same thing. As far as my pockets, these are not super skinny. It's not a problem. It's more when you're holding it and using it. Anyway, there you have it. An unboxing and first look at the most pro of all the iPhone 12 Pros. It is the iPhone 12 Pro Max.